that you might realize that we may be on the brink of World War III. They want to take a chip. That chip is called Luciferase. They want to take this chip and put it inside your body. Good morning and greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is such a privilege to have you join me this morning. I want to thank you for your contributions. I want to thank you for patronizing us with spreading this word to your friends and your families and your acquaintances. And God's word spreads because you make that happen. Thank you. For sharing. Beloved, we are so eager, so keen to open up our services once again. And as I said to you last week, watch the space. We want to plan a Good Friday service at one venue so we can all gather together. Um, I'm just tentative and we're praying about it. And the only reason that we, that I am hesitant is because not even one life is worth losing for a service, not one. Because God is touching you where you sit. He's reaching people even that never used to have access to this kind of sermon. Never had it before. So it's not like we're losing much. The only thing is, is that our heart truly aches that we cannot see each other. We cannot put our arms around each other. We cannot clap and worship together. And that is heart-wrenching at times. It's even more heart-wrenching for me to keep us closed for now. And therefore, my children, all of us are so eager that we want to get together again. And so we're thinking seriously and just keep your eyes open. Uh, listen to the sermons as they follow and we will keep you posted. As you might as well have heard that a fifth wave, which we expected and we know who's causing that, is out and about and it's even more dangerous than the one that we've just come out of. The numbers in Australia is climbing, the numbers in China is climbing and this news of the war has overshadowed and overpowered uh, the news about all these things that are going on. So my ear is to the ground, I'm very careful and I need to make sure that we protect ourselves as long as we can because just losing a dad in a home, losing it's, it's, it's a life and I wouldn't want to expose anyone to that. And so therefore, you know, I've been, I've been looking through social media and every day, and I promise you every day, just yesterday I, I've seen a young lady. She must be in her 20s in one of the churches in, um, in Malvern. The funeral was done. And, and it's, it's unprecedented what's happening. And because we are not... Uh, uh, looking deep into this stuff and we are just using our emotions, we might not be able to see the danger ahead. So just bear with me for a while longer and we will bring our fellowship together as soon as I can, uh, the Lord can give me peace about it. And we, we will pray together. Remember last week now, we'll get into the sermon. Last week I shared with you a video clip of a lady by the name of Bina Rothblack. Thanks, thanks to Nicole's investigative journalism and our intuitive uh, thought pattern, we were able to discover a few things that I'd like to bring to your attention. This woman 
is um, married to a woman who once was a man and I shared with you a video last week where they are doing, they own a company, an NGO, where they experiment, that NGO is called Terasim. It, it they're experimenting with taking the information from Bina's DNA, transplanting that information into a, an android and she had a conversation with that android that is actually called Bina 48. So that android now has access to all Bina's memories, all her thoughts, everything that she is about and, and so this experiment that's going on, I shared with you about it last week, was founded first by her partner, her husband. I don't know how else to refer to these people. Her husband is named Martin Rodblack. This is him previous to him coming out as a homosexual. A Wikipedia search on this person might give you a picture of him when he transitioned to become a woman and so known as Martin. The first thing we learn about this man, woman, is that he originated or came from a Jewish family. There we go, the Ashkenazi Jews are busy, have been busy all along. He, she, Rod Black is well known for medical and pharmaceutical innovation. The degree that she, he has was granted in June 2001 based upon his or her dissertation on the conflict between private and public interests in xenotransplantation. That's a very interesting word. Xenotransplantation means, it comes from the Greek word xenos, from meaning foreign or strange, or heterologous transplant, is the transplant of living cells, tissues or organs, from one species to another. You remember I taught you about XNA products that are being made, that are put on our shelves, what they call plant-based, and they want us to eat this XNA. These items that are so-called plant-based, that have been modified, are not, do not contain DNA. They are now being transplanted, where seeds are either mixed or made in a lab, where they're now known as XNA, xenonucleic acid. So this Martin was a pioneer, one of the pioneers of this project. In 2004, the article says, Rod Black launched the Terrasem movement, a transhumanist school of thought focused on promoting joy, that's ironic. Diversity and the prospect of technological immortality via mind uploading and geoethical nanotechnology. There's a mouthful in that description, but transhumanist basically means converting a human into something else, planting something from something else into a human being. And we know, we've seen that already. To promote joy, now joy can only be gotten in a soul that is created by God. They want to achieve immortality. In other words, they don't want to die. This has been the goal of this scientific research for ages now. They want to, it's called mind Uploading. They want to upload the mind. You know, I taught you extensively about the mind um, and how it's been influenced over the years. The mind, which is captured inside your DNA. They want to transplant 
and upload the mind into something that is not human so that they can extend human life indefinitely. The reason I share this with you is because I want you to see reality. This is not conspiracy theory. This is reality. And I want you to see, as I've shown you in sermons past, how these descendants of Esau, who became Ashkenazi Jews, and how they amassed wealth and technological and medical advancements in the world, and hold posts of great influence in world governments so that they can control the end days that Satan has planned. I also think that you might realize that we may be on the brink of World War III. It might be a cold war, but it's a war nevertheless. According to the book of Daniel, when we read about the breaking of seals that Jesus broke in heaven, this war signals the breaking of the second seal. A cold war, just to let you know, those of you who don't know what a cold war is, a cold war is where no weapons are used like bombs, nuclear weapons. It's a cold war of sanctions, economic sanctions against different countries like what they're doing with Russia now this is this is what is known as a cold war now I'm going to let you see a small video clip so that it can set us up to understand why this cold war is so much on the cards right now apart from the the war that is physically taking place now in Ukraine where bombs are being planted or what we are given to believe is happening. There is a shortage of fuel. There is a shortage of food sources. And so once a fuel shortage emanates, it trickles down to countries and then economies. Basically, money becomes an issue. And just so you know that all transactions worldwide is conducted in U.S. dollars. Now take a listen to this clip. Just Demand listen to this. It could explain everything that's going on right now. And soon it had a new name the petrodollar your currency is only as strong as the demand for it just like anything else the supply and demand why the petrodollar is important it causes a demand for the US dollar a lot of Americans don't realize that over 70 percent of all the hundred dollar bills in the world are actually outside of the US there's more hundred dollar bills in Russia than there are in America this stockpile of US dollars in countries around the world is because oil is bought and sold using the greenback. If oil starts trading in non-petrodollars, such as gold or a basket of currencies, or if China and Russia start trading in yuan and ruble rather than US dollars, that demand isn't there. And the way of life for the average American will be done. It will be worse than the Great Depression. To date, anyone who's potentially threatened the status of the petrodollar hasn't fared well. <laughs> Libyan strongman Muammar Gaddafi publicly pushed for a pan-African gold-backed currency that he would trade for Libya's oil. He was killed during a U.S.-backed revolution in 2011. <laughs> and just a few short years before, Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein advocated selling oil for euros. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq. The U.S. invaded under the guise of looking for WMDs. Iraq did not have any weapons of mass destruction. And interestingly enough, after the Americans invaded, took over, put in their own government, the whole concept of selling oil in euros never surfaced again. Today, many countries resent the current petrodollar system. Their leading spokesperson, 
is none other than Russian President Vladimir Putin. Americans should be very worried about what Putin can do. There is a new Cold War going on. It is the colder war. That is exactly what's going on. And who's in the center of this push? Vladimir Putin. And the petrodollar is so crucial to the colder war. The only thing holding America right now at the top is the petrodollar. And let me make it very clear. If the petrodollar dies, so does America as a superpower. It may come as no surprise to many of you because after me sharing with you tons of information, you probably would expect something of this nature. Bottom line is the United States wants to, at any expense, maintain the dominance of the US dollar. So far, they were successful through the control of the BIS bank, I told you, the World Bank, the IMF. They became nervous when BRICS was formed. That's Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa formed their own sort of bank, World Bank, similar to what they have, the World Bank and the IMF. So that they can control certain economies and they don't have to depend on that US dollar. And because of that, there was a tension that was building because this US dollar is the basis on which the world economy, especially the Americans, survive. And the cabal maintains their dominance. Now if Russia in this venture into Ukraine is successful, it sets up a platform for the world war because of a short shortage of fuel and energy. The book of Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7 tells us this. The rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. There is a person I want you to listen to. He's a multi-millionaire property magnet, also involved in other businesses. His name is Robert Kiyosaki from Hawaii originally. This video clip about the wisdom he has amassed concerning money is revealed in a short portion of this clip that I'm playing for you. My father was the head of education, PhD, all that stuff. I go home and ask him, said, why don't we learn about money in school? And he looked at me and says, because the government doesn't let us teach that subject. The government tells us what we can teach and what we can't teach. And I thought that was strange. And I said, but aren't we going to school to learn about money? He says, no, your job is to get a job. I said, but you get a job to earn money. He goes, no, you're supposed to just get a job. And I went, no, 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 no. Isn't the purpose of a job to earn money? He goes, you're correct. I said, so why don't I just learn about money? I can skip the job part, you know? And he got flustered and he said, if you want to learn about money, why don't you ask your best friend's father about money? And I said, why? That's Mike. So I ask him. He says, because Mike's father is an entrepreneur. And I said, what, am, what are you? He says, I'm an employee. I'm a government employee. And I went, oh, what's the difference? He says, the difference is an entrepreneur must know about money or that they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. And he says, an employee doesn't have to know anything about money because the government will take care of them, the company will take care of them. So I'm kid, I'm all confused. But I took my dad's advice and I trundled over to Mike's father's office and knocked on his door and I said, hey, I'm here, nine years old, teach me about money. He says, beat it, kid, you know. But that's where the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad started. And finally, through persistence, my rich dad started teaching me about money on one condition. And that condition was he would never pay me. He says, the moment I pay you, you think like an employee. He says, that's the trap. Entrepreneurs work for free. 
and now I'm nine years old, my head's going cracking in half. He says, you never want a paycheck. You understand that, kid? I said, okay, I got it. And he says, well, how do I make money? He says, that's what entrepreneurs figure out. <laughs> it looks like, well, I wasn't poor by most people's standards, but I came from a family with a poor attitude, if you know what I mean, because rich, poor, middle class, poverty starts with a fundamental attitude. Poverty is passed on. It's taught in your families. And middle class is taught in families. And so the people right now who are sitting at home <clears throat> who are struggling financially or worried about money or unhappy, they may be making a lot of money, but unhappy with what they're doing, it was probably taught to you. You know, your super ego was taught, get a job, work hard, or you'll, or you'll never be rich, or the rich are evil, or whatever. The school system will never teach you about money. The school system was designed to teach you to be an employee, which is important, or a doctor or a lawyer, a specialist, but never about money. And the answer is very simply, my rich dad, who's my, my best friend's father, his father died when he was 13. So his so rich dad had this family business at 13 to run. So he had to drop out of school, which was his blessing. You know, those blessings and, you know, sometimes the blessing doesn't look like a blessing, but it turned out to be a blessing. And then his teachers became his bookkeeper, his accountant, his attorney, his banker, his real estate agents. So he has what I call real teachers, not these fake teachers in school. I see you giving this knowledge out and yeah. do, do the rich people cringe and say, don't tell them that, Rob? Yes, yes, yes. Don't tell people what, they, what you know. Right. Keep them poor. But, you know, unfortunately, the poor, as was in the Bible, I'm not real religious, the poor will always be amongst us because it starts up here. Right, it's that fear mentality. It's, it's in their words, you know, and the words become flesh. Again, I'm not really religious. I flunked out of Sunday school also. But when they say I can't afford it or I can't do that, they go down. They become what they say. My PhD daddy says, what do you think I am, made of money? I can't afford that. And my rich dad would say, that's why he's poor. Poor people say, I can't afford it, I can't do that, I don't have time. Because this is an escape. It's an escape, you know what I mean? It's easy to say, I can't afford it. And your rich dad used to say what, instead of, I can't afford it? How can I afford it? How can I do that? You know, what would it take, or why should I do that? He says, a, a question opens a mind, a statement closes the mind. See, when you say, I can't afford it, your mind shuts down and you become what you say. You might realize and your mind might open up about this once you've listened carefully to some of the things that this man has shared. He said this, that when you are working for a company who pays you money, you are dependent on a paycheck. They can control your strings. They can dictate to you as they tested during this thing that they were trying to do and forcing people to do something to their bodies that they didn't want to do. And because they held the money strings, they thought they can control everybody. You know, Jesus made this statement. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Let's look at this whole scenario that played out before us in this past year about forcing people in exchange for their paycheck. Lots of you passed this test and God now or you now realize where you stand with God and who's your master, whether it is God or the company that holds your money. And you've come through with flying colors. This is an accolade for you. 
And you need to pat yourself in the back. Because one day soon, you're going to hear those words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have proven to yourself that you are not controlled. That's not your master. You see, whoever controls what you want becomes master of it, of you. And so if you want and long after and crave after your job that gives you money, then that becomes your master. You become slave. I'd be a slave for God any day. But God gives us still freedom of choice. What a wonderful God. So if you choose that you, you don't want God, he doesn't force you. It's important for you to know this. That you cannot open your child's mouth and force God down their throat or your wife or your husband or anybody. God calls his people. You have to just plant a seed and let God do the rest. Never force anybody to receive God as their savior. Never. It's also quite a beautiful way in which if you want to watch the full video in which he talks about how wanting that paycheck makes you a slave and how the government doesn't want to educate you about money they want to keep that a secret because the devil holds the purse strings so they don't want children to learn about it they want children to learn about jobs so that they can become slaves. This might be an opportunity for some of you that left work, that refused to go and be subjected to the masters. They expected some of you to say, yes, Masa. But you said, no, only God is my master. Because you hold my money doesn't make you my master. So it's an opportunity for you to not work for a paycheck. It's an opportunity for you to start becoming innovative. To look inside yourself and find what can God, what has God given me in my nature that can make it possible for me to survive. Even if it's just the needs, but God will make a way. He gave every one of us at least something. And this is an opportunity that might look like it is an evil thing. But God wants to bring the best out of many of us. In addition to what I've just mentioned to you. The government wants to keep you enslaved. Because of what they, all around the world, what they program their children. They've been programming all of us from very young age. And it's difficult sometimes to unprogram people. And sometimes even when people come and sit under my ministry, even start listening to me, the, the hardest job is to unprogram. Because as a Christian too, they've been learning things and I need to unprogram them and, and give them a mind that it's, it's not an easy task. But by the grace of God, I have achieved much in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to thank God for that privilege of you know, in Romans 1, 12, 1 and 2, it says, you cannot know the will of God unless you have a reshaping of the mind. Because the world has been busy programming people for a very long time. One of the reasons why you have to, because you have to find entrepreneurship, you have to find, find yourself, is because we're facing a recession, which I've taught the church about in 2018, before this whole thing broke out and we closed up, that there's going to come a time of great recession, spoken about the second three and a half years of the tribulation. There's going to be a shortage of fuel. I think you might have heard the minister of South Africa declare that it might come to a place where we will only allow to fill a certain number of liters or 50 liters in a month or so. 
at, this, at the fuel station. I'm not sure exactly how that will play out. But people are nervous. The governments are nervous. There's going to be a huge shortage of almost all products. But the cabal, they have well laid out plans. And I want to bring your attention to those plans. While they are making plans, you have to make sure that your reliance, your dependence is on yourself and God. The cabal has well laid out plans to enslave people even further. So this game I told you that is being played out, that war that's happening, is setting the platform for the latest unveiling part of their agenda. And that, you see, if the US dollar were to crumble, the cabal will lose a lot. So they have plans in place to move us to the next level. Let me introduce this for you, to you first. In a repeat article that featured on Oprah News, this is what the article said. The Microsoft Body Activity Data System rewards people with cryptocurrency when they accomplish certain tasks. The system can also disable your ability to buy and sell goods if you disobey orders. It's a slick system that aims to control all financial transactions for every human being on the planet. But first, every human needs the software installed inside them for it to work. Many of us heard this. I even shared some of this in different sermons in the past. But something more we need to hear now. Another website, and this article is all over. It talks about Verichip. Verichip is an injectable identification chip that can be inserted under the skin of a human being to provide biometric verification. Verichip manufactured by Applied Digital Solutions is about the size of a grain of rice. The next headline, Microsoft partners with implantable RFID chip maker, Verichip. Microsoft patent describes tracking brain activity to mine cryptocurrency. The next one says, the patent suggests using body heat, fluids or brain waves to validate blockchain transactions and award users with digital currency such as Bitcoin. Now this is where we were about a year back or two years back rather. Now we are transitioning even to the next stage. Let me first in layman's language tell you what they are about to do and launch into the world so that they can save the crushing of the US dollar. Here it is. They want to take a chip which we know Microsoft got a patent for. That chip is called Luciferase and the patent number is 666 with the devil's name or the number which the Bible prophesied 2,000 years ago about. They want to take this chip and put it inside your body to monitor all your transactions and all your actions. But here is the important thing. They want to create a currency. A term now what is called programmable digital currency where they can, let's say you work for a company and you earn 1,000 rand or 
$1,000 a month depending where you're watching from. Now let me explain this. With that thousand rands, they will only allow you or give you tokens, sort of like a token but it's digital, that you can buy beef with. A certain number of tokens that you can buy, pay rent with. A certain, so if you want something over and above, you can't buy it because your tokens won't be programmed for you to buy certain things. They can also punish you if you do something they don't want you to do. By removing those tokens or blocking those tokens. So that when you get punished for that month you can't buy meat. And so this is the way where you're not going to walk around with a wallet and cash. You're going to have your money programmed to only buy certain things for that certain month. That's called digital programming of currency. It's not going to be paper money anymore or coins anymore. It's going to be digital. At the time when this article I've just read to you about, they were talking about Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is going to be a thing of the past in a very short period of time. Because this new programmable money which is going to be instituted by the Federal Reserve Banks of all the countries. And we know the Federal Reserves of all the countries are owned by the cabal. Just recently, a headline article says, another conspiracy theory comes true as Biden signs executive order to create a U.S. central bank digital currency. Now, this system is, all, is already active in China. But now the American president is quietly introducing this programmable money system. In fact, in June of last year, another quiet thing happened. The Telegraph reported, the Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. The article says digital cash could be programmed to ensure it is only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or government deems to be sensible. The Bank of England has called on ministers to decide whether a central bank digital currency should be programmable, ultimately giving the issuer control over how it is spent by the recipient. There you go. You see, it's, it's talk first. It's speculation first. It's conspiracy theory first. But now it's become official government stance. Now governments are making it law. They are introducing it. That's why I said to you, this is just a game going on in Ukraine. Because they already, they were using this to set the platform for introducing quietly this new type of money. In fact, the Bank of England's website itself says, Statement on Central Bank Digital Currency Next Steps. You will have no control over your own money. In a recent episode of Naturally Inspired Daily, host Tamik Khadbat Garcia talked about programmable currency. The programmable currency is digital cash programmed to ensure it can only be spent on essentials or goods that an employer or government deems to be sensible. In other words, the issuer of the money would have complete control over how you spend your own money and could punish you for undesirable opinions or behaviors by restricting your purchasing ability or seizing your funds altogether. It involves a blockchain code, Cuthbert Garcia said. So it's almost like a token system. You won't, won't be able to use your own money just for anything. You will have to use that code, that programmable code, to buy certain things, she explained. 
So maybe you have only 10 digital tokens to buy beef that week. Once again, you use those tokens, you can't buy any more. It's a way to ration things. And so it's the holder of the centralized currency, the controller of the centralized currency doesn't want certain things to take place. Then they'll simply not create those tokens to buy those things. It's kind of like a lock and key type. So for instance, if you're selling a product that you made or you want to make, if the currency doesn't, if the program doesn't allow for certain tokens to be digitally transferred to you because they want to buy it from you, they cannot buy, you will sit with your products. So only companies that are registered with the cabal will be able to sell their products using the tokens that they're going to pay you at your job for. Before this becomes fully fledged, and listen, it's already started happening as of last year. It's moving in very fast pace. Things like Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrencies are going to be moved out the way and it's going to be this one world currency. Exactly as the Bible predicted. And it's going to be transactioned only through a chip that is planted inside your body and you can scan and take your money from your employer and then you have to buy things with that same token that they put inside you digitally. So there's going to be a, your body connected to the internet of things. It's going to be internet of bodies connected to internet of things. This is their plan. And it's unfolding very fast. Before our eyes, it's all happening like almost underground. But I want to bring awareness to you. And this is why our, our ears need to be pricked. We need to be listening and seeing the signs of the end. For if we are caught napping, we might not make it. Let me explain this in a way. You see, there's many people who listen to my preaching. Many people who even don't, but they seek God. They're looking for information about God. They like to hear revelatory things. They're curious minds. They have a thirst for this kind of knowledge. And that is excellent. But there are some who do that and they go one step further. <clears throat> they want to have a personal relationship with God. For God is a person and he is father to us. And therefore a personal relationship to actually know God is necessary. In fact, to the point of, if you don't know God, yada him, like you should, when the trumpet sounds, you might find your feet not lifting off the ground. That is a frightful thought. For the simple reason that you will be left behind here. And at that time, People who were Christians who were left behind because of what I just shared with you now. That they don't have a personal relationship with God. Those people are going to realize and they're going to have to live on this planet. Resisting these cabal people because they will be forcing people in order to survive. That they must have that chip and this is how they must operate. And so people wouldn't be able to buy milk for their breastfeeding baby. They're going to look with their eyes. Their five-year-olds won't be able to eat. They'll have to look and see them starving. People will be homeless walking on the street with nothing. You won't be able to buy clothes, put a shelter on your head, and you have to die for the sake of Christ. 
Some people may not be strong enough. They might take the chip and so lose the salvation. And God said to us, when that happens, many, many, many will lose their salvation. But there will be a few, a handful, who would rather die than take that chip because they will realize eternity awaits them. And they will suffer and they will pay a severe price for not listening when things were easier to listen to. And so it is important that people take heed that these words in the book of Revelation is not a fantasy story. As you can see, it is coming to pass. Things that were not even in existence or entered the mind of a man during the book of Revelation, during John's time when he was writing it. It's coming to pass now, 2,000 years later. And some people still don't believe that time is short. So I was saying to you, God is a person. You, you know, I'm a person. Now there's many people who know me because they read about me in certain places. They assess who I am through my words or my actions. But to be honest, the people who only truly know me are the ones of my family. They know my moods, they know my emotions, they know what buttons to push when they want to irritate me. It's, 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 a, it's a personal one-on-one -on -one relationship with people that live with me. And the only way they can know that is because if they, they have a one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with me. And so our father is the same way. In fact, it's like all of you have. People only know the photos you post on Twitter or on Instagram or on Facebook. They know about you of what you say. But only your family knows you, properly knows you. And so learning about God from me, from reading and all that is one aspect. But if you truly want to get to know God, you've got to get down on your knees certain times. You've got to sleep on your bed and talk to him before your eyes close. You've got to greet him in the morning when you get up. When you're washing your dishes, he needs to be at the back of your mind. Not what rent I'm going to pay. You know, husband, my husband spoke to me so bad words in the morning and he left. Not those thoughts must go through your mind. God must go through your mind. When you're working... There must be a constant communication, especially in this age. A constant relationship and a constant awareness of the presence of God. And slowly, you learn about God's emotions. For He is a person. He has a personality. You'll hear, about, you'll feel and understand the, the, the times that we are ahead. You'll feel uh, confidence, you'll feel uh, um, uh, a warning. All these things you can only sense if you have that personal relationship. So I want to encourage people. Whether you are a ch child, 15 years old, 12 years old, some 6 year olds understand. In fact, Sophie understands to have a relationship. She's the one who reminds us we need to have communion. So there's a constant presence that God is inside of you and I, the reason I'm being so passionate about what I'm saying is because I want to take with us every single being that listens to the sound of my voice nobody must be left behind because what they planning for us for human beings is to transhumanize you. To make you lose your soul and your spirit. All you ever knew all your life was suffering and heartache and pain. Many people have been through problems upon problems. People let them down. Heartache. Suffering. You know as much as things may look good on the outside. Every person has had their tough time emotionally, many physically, 
It will be so sad that these people who don't make it ne will never know what it is to have eternal bliss. They will never experience it in their entire existence here and the hereafter. And so a small price to pay is just to be alert to have a relationship with an unseen God. Talk to him on a daily basis. Let him convict you of whatever you need to be convicted of. Have that relationship that when the trumpet sounds, you will have no doubt. No doubt that I am going to rise to meet my Christ. Things that may seem impossible to the human being now. When Jesus comes, he will defy gravity. And we will go. And I pray all together. Let me pray for you, for your salvation, for your stance with God, for your relationship with the Father. Let us pray. Let us pray, beloved. Raise your hands, close your eyes wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I cover all your children with that precious blood that never fails. I pray, Lord, that everyone that heard the sound of my voice, that it's going to land on good soil. Today they're going to start a new relationship with you like never before. Getting to know you, Lord, on a personal level. Even people who never come to you before, they're going to start knowing you. And Lord, their salvation blanket will be wrapped around them. Secure with the Holy Spirit. That the devil will never be able to steal. I bless them all now, Lord. As they venture into this world, I bless them all in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Beloved, remember, Jesus always wins. No matter what they do, God always wins. God bless you. Have a blessed week. I'll see you again next week.